Hello, today I'm going to show you how to brew and distill kombucha. Why make your own kombucha? Several reasons. One is that it's much cheaper than buying it and it doesn't take that much time to brew. And uh, most of the time is waiting for it to ferment. Uh, another reason is that you can make it how you like it. So let's get right to it. This video is mostly based on my personal experience with some research sprinkled in. Before doing any cooking, the first step is always to have everything ready and have a clean work area prepared. So this is pretty much everything we're going to need here except for the water. Uh, it's tea bags, black tea in this case, six tea bags, one cup of water of sugar, a scoby with its liquid, a small pot, a funnel or measuring cup, a wooden spoon, a gallon glass jar, glass bottles for after we're done fermenting, a breathable cloth, which we'll be putting over the top of our jar, and a Varbanda secure it. Optional are pH strips. I don't have those. I don't usually use those. And um, some flavors, which are optional. That's some dried cherries, some cold coffee, and some spirulina powder. We'll get to those later. Uh, so the reason that we use glass jars and bottles for fermenting and storage is because of the acidity of kombucha. The acidity can cause chemicals to leach from metal or another substance. So, our first step is to boil four cups of water. So we've got our four cups of water boiling, and um, once we have that, we're going to turn off the heat and move this to another burner. And then we're gonna add our black tea bags, our six black tea bags. So we're adding our six black tea bags in there. Now you can get black tea bags in bulk for cheap. Uh, so they're pretty inexpensive. You can use another caffeinated tea such as green or white tea, but the flavor is not going to be as strong. So I do recommend sticking with the black tea. So that's going to steep for about five to six minutes. Uh, after we've got that water boiling, put it on another burner and put the tea bags in. I usually like to set a timer, so we'll do that. And come back in five to six minutes. So our tea has been steeping for about five to six minutes. And now we're gonna remove these tea bags and then add our sugar and stir it until it dissolves. So we got those tea bags removed and set aside. Now we're going to put this sugar in here. I usually like to spread it around a little bit there. and stir for about a minute or two. Our next step is going to be to add this tea and sugar combination into our gallon glass jar. I'm going to pour that in there in a moment here. Once we add this in here, 
to this gallon glass jar we're going to add our eight cups of water it's normally suggested that your tea and sugar combination either be below 87 degrees or at room temperature I usually don't use a, a thermometer to check but if you're wanting to make sure that your um, at 87 degrees or room temperature you can use a, a thermometer to check on it but I usually don't because the the cold water that we're gonna add in a moment cools it down if you're doing a larger batch or you feel more comfortable letting it cool then I'd say go ahead and do that okay so our tea and sugar solution is in our jar and then we're gonna put in our eight cups of cold water if you spill a little like I just did it's not great but it doesn't have to be exact so we've got our eight cups in along with our tea and our sugar and now we're going to add our scoby and our liquid with our scoby okay so we've got everything that we need set up we've got our scoby along with our tea and our water and now we're going to put either a napkin or a breathable cloth over the top along with the rubber band and so the the cloth lets it breathe some so it can do its fermentation but it prevents bad stuff from getting in and we're gonna put that up in a pretty warm place such as on top of a refrigerator and uh, hopefully out of sunlight as well and let that ferment for 7 to 14 days I mentioned the the pH strips earlier before you put uh, the put it up if you want to check the pH you want to make sure it's 4.5 or lower if you're doing that what is a SCOBY? SCOBY is actually an acronym SCOBY stands for symbiotic culture of bacteria and yeast so where can you get a SCOBY? basically you have to get it from somewhere or someone if you buy a kit to make your first batch of kombucha then a SCOBY should come with that kit you can buy a SCOBY by itself uh, it will usually come with this liquid on the internet the ideal way is to get one from someone that you know who's making kombucha uh, over time more SCOBYs will form as you're making kombucha and you should have extra and uh, the last way which uh, is a little bit uh, takes a little bit of doing is that you can get a bottle of plain kombucha and use that to make a scoby you can find uh, the process for doing that on the internet as well as your kombucha is fermenting some people will worry about their scoby uh, they worry because it isn't floating at the top or it's sideways 
those aren't really things to worry about. That's okay. Uh, the SCOBY will be white and brown. You should worry if you see black, green, red, or orange mold. If that's the case, you should get rid of that batch of kombucha and start with the new SCOBY. Okay, so at about that 7-9 to nine day mark, the kombucha will be pretty sweet. If you wait 14 days, it will have a more tart taste. And if you go beyond that 14 days, it's going to gain a more vinegar taste. Once you've waited those 7 to 14 days, you're ready to transfer the kombucha. You want to have whatever you're going to transfer to ready and any flavors you want to add. Or you can just drink it as is. You can add herbs, spices, fruits, vegetables, etc. I like to keep it pretty simple. For the bottles, I reuse bottles from kombuchas I kombucha I purchased, but you can buy other appropriate glass bottles. For the flavorings, if I'm going to use liquids or dried fruits or something like that, I will put it in the bottle first. So I've already put dried cherries in there and some cold coffee. For powders, I usually like to wait until after I put the kombucha in because it seems to dissolve better that way than if it's already on the bottom. And I just like to keep it simple and mostly have one or two ingredients like the coffee or the spirulina powder or cherries. Although sometimes I do a combo of cherries and coffee or something else. You can really experiment as much as you want and try and find what flavors you like the best. And you can also find recipes in um, some books on kombucha or online that tell you how much of different ingredients add for good flavor combinations. So we're ready to take our SCOBY out along with some liquid to set aside. Okay, so you're going to remove the SCOBY from the jar with about a half a cup of liquid. If you're not making another batch immediately, I suggest storing it in your refrigerator. You can transfer the kombucha from the jar to the bottles by using a funnel or pour it into a measuring cup with a spout and fill the bottles from that. So we're using a measuring cup in this case and that spout has been very good at helping to prevent dribbling for me. You're going to want to leave a little bit of space if you're going to add powders. If you already have the things in the bottom like that coffee and the cherries, you can just fill them as full as you would like. So for the powders, I'm going to do sort of an example here of adding spirulina powder. So it's mostly full there. There's a little bit of space. And for the spirulina powder in the, the spout of these bottles, I'll usually put about a teaspoon of powder in there, but I'll use 
the half a teaspoon because that will fit sort of in a spout and then I can dump it in there without it spilling out to the side. So we got our powder in there and so once we, we have this kombucha transferred to these bottles and we're going to put the caps on and it's usually suggested that you store that kombucha for 24 to 48 hours at room temperature to ferment a little bit more with what you've added. Uh, it helps it ferment together a little bit more, get a little bit more bubbly. That's optional. You can um, just go ahead and refrigerate it now. Uh, otherwise, after that second ferment, you should go ahead and refrigerate it. Okay, that's all we have for today. Thank you for watching this video. I hope it was educational and helpful. Goodbye.